the importance of change to be connected to a chain connected to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu this is a, a gift and a grant from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And he, why you have to be connected to someone living? Why not just read books? Although even books, if you have a chain to their uh, writer, to the author, that comes with more barakah and blessings and openings of understanding. It's a miracle. The chains in Islam are miracle. There's no religion on earth or no forget religion even dunya institutions whether uh, kingdoms or uh, businesses or whatever countries uh, or culture in which the chains leading back to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, whether be it from the recitation of the Quran or to his holy speech or to his actions or to his states in Islam it's the only uh, religion in which they have ilm rijal even the people who are narrating they know their, who they are they know if they had good memory the science they know if this person ever lied in his life and it's a miracle even we we wrote a book about the animals of prophets also tell me who who is a king or a sultan or a president who the animals names are preserved we know the name of his donkey we know Ufair. we know the name of his salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayh we know the name of his mule duldul say al qiswa his camel why it's a miracle it's not something you find in uh, in this except when there is a real line of light and barakah coming through that's guiding his ummah and guiding them through what? through guides guiding them through awliya 124,000 wali but the importance of mashayikh is not just so you sit and read with them and understand the books only but it's actually what is happening on the unseen the baraka the hal the state you know they their gaze there's a saying in the egyptian sheikh i think i believe said man lam yanfa'uka lahduhu lan yanfa'uka wa'duhu he said the one whose gaze does not benefit you his education, his words are not going to benefit you. Shaykh. And the Prophet ﷺ indicated, he said, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. Is pray as if the way you see me pray. How are you going to pray now? Even in fiqh, how are you going to pray if you don't see someone who saw someone who saw someone all the way to Prophet ﷺ? But the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved. They asked one time, uh, one of the, uh, I think it was Habib Ali Jifri, about why Tasawwuf. He said, Find me one, one Islamic science, one, from the Qira'at, to Ilm al Hadith, to even Nahu, uh, to Usul uh, al Deen, to whatever. Find me anything, any of the sciences in which you can go back and not find any Sufis in them, in, the, in their chain of... Uh, even those who claim that Tasawwuf and Mashayikh are not... They are in need of the Mashayikh for their learning. 
It's impossible. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So because of that, it's important to understand that there is something more when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides you to be in the presence of a person who is a living inheritor of the Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this dunya is it's the it is an opening for those who take advantage of this Assalamu alaikum It's an opportunity to reach Allah's pleasure and understanding and to have some risk, some uh, sustenance from that inheritance. We met Mawlana Sheikh Nazim, Qaddas Allah Sirul Aziz, and instantly If you come to him with an open heart and without predisposition or ill manners, your heart recognizes that this human being is something extraordinary. He was Qaddas Allah Sirul Aziz, he was someone who embodied the prophetic light. And you sit in his presence and then you understand the, and you understand that, you understand the meaning when, when, you, when you sit in someone's presence and you don't need any explanation of what is going on. I met him in 99 and I was lucky the first time I met him, I spent one week with him in New Jersey and then he went to Michigan for a couple more weeks. We followed him to Michigan, we spent two weeks. There's, uh, I mean, we're Muslims, we, we were born Muslims, we went to the Masajid, our parents took it. But there is no reference point in one's faith we had no understanding of what it means for the, the tasting of the sweetness. We had, the, there was no dhawq before that. A one, one hour, one minute in Mawlana Shaykh Nazim's presence and you are experiencing and tasting, experiencing things that you've never experienced in your life. Your heart, your soul, Things that hard to explain, but to be in the presence of a wali from awliyaullah, a sincere servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, gives you dhawq. And I was lucky enough a few months later to join him in Uzbekistan for also two, two three weeks visiting the maqams. And in, I remember in Uzbekistan going from one of the uh, maqams to another maqam. Eleven of the grand masters of the Naqshbandi way are in Uzbekistan. From Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, uh, Sayyidina Abdul Khalil al Ghajduwani, Mu'alif Khadm al Khawajagan, Ali al Ramitni, uh, Sayyid Amir Kulali, Shah Bahauddin Naqshband, grand masters of the, the way. And we were going to visit visit them, but I remember I was new at that time. And I remember that in some of some or most of the gatherings when we were sitting with him, especially when when we did the khatam a few times, or when we were standing and he was making munajat. I remember that if there is a heaven, it must feel like this. He was his his presence was astonishing. Because you forget dunya, 
you forget you 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 taste the sweetness of uh, the heavenly presence in their presence and the only thing you can that explains is when prophet sallallahu his companions came to him and i think it was allahumma sayyidina allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad nafaqa hanzala sayyidina hanzala his name one of the companions he was sad one day and he said hanzala is a munafiq now and uh, sayyidina abu bakr siddiq saw him in the state and he said what is your problem he said i feel like i'm a hypocrite he said why you say that He said, when I was, when I'm with my beloved, I am in such a state, because the, the description of the prophets from the seer, of the Sahaba from the seerah, كأن على رؤوسهم الطير, is as if they are so still that the, the birds mistake them for inanimate objects in his presence. Now we know, I mean, you sit for half an hour, one hour, you need to move your your but the companions were such in a in a spiritual state of presence with prophet sallallahu that they were so still that birds will mistake them that's the description from the seerah birds will mistake them for branches and they, they will land on them allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad And so he, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq said, what is your problem? He said, Nafaq Hamdallah. Hamdallah is Munafiq. When I am with my beloved, I am seeing heavens, seeing, some of the companions were say, were say, Ma alamatu imanik. He said, when I stand to pray, I see heaven on my right, I see. I see hand on my left. They were experiencing things and states in the presence of Prophet ﷺ they never imagined. They say, I'm seeing, I'm experiencing all this. As soon as I leave his presence, I am feeling, you know, going to my business, my work, I'm feeling disconnected. I'm feeling like I'm not experiencing that anymore. So I'm feeling maybe I am munafiq. And this is another thing. The companions always accuse themselves. When, 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 the, when they never gave themselves rest to feel that they have attained something. No, they, they always looked and said, maybe there's something wrong with me. But he, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, who is the patron, who is, this tariqah is through Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq. Naqshbandi is taking from Sayyidina Abu Bakr, all the other turuq taking from Sayyidina Ali. Karram Allah wajah. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq said to him, I'm also experiencing some of this, out of humility as well. Not to say, no, no, no there's nothing wrong with you or to say there's something wrong with you. No. Say, I'm also like you. Let's remedy our uh, situation and go to the Prophet. So when they went to the Prophet Sallallahu he said, no, this is not nifaq. But, he said, if you are able to maintain your states that you have in my presence outside, the angels will shake your hands. You will see the angels. You will be in a state that you can see the angels walk in the streets and you shake their hands. So when you're in the presence of someone like that, it's not because of, our, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants whom he likes what he likes. When you are sincere seeking, seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because not everyone who goes to the mashayikh is going for the right reasons as well. But those who are going for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sincerely seeking Allah's pleasure and they sit in the presence of these mashayikh they are sitting in the prophetic presence they must believe this it's not the shaykh 
or his physical appearance. It's not soul, son of soul, no. That disappears. When, when someone uh, follows tariqah, the nafs, mutu qabla and tamutu, disappears. Not disappears in the sense that he doesn't have a nafs, no, but it is his mitzvah. It's under his command. So there's no more I like and I want and no, it's prophet likes, prophet wants, prophet did, like that. And that's what the mashayikh, when you're with them, you learn the sunnah. You learn what the prophet liked, sallallahu alayhi wa You learn how he was. You see how you, you, you see. You see when the shaykh is dealing when Mawlana Sheikh Nazim, how he made everybody feel like they were so so important. No matter who came to his presence, they felt that they are the most special person in his presence. How he made them happy, how he made them laugh. Uh, you see how he deals with the guest. Now you can read about this in books, Canon Nabi Sallallahu and you can learn. But to be in the presence of Mashaykh is something else. And this is now in today's world uh, an honor and a grant and a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He grants to whom he likes. Nineteen twenty two spent over seventy years until nineteen seventy he went to his Shaykh in the forties and spent with him with Sheikh Abdullah Faiz Daghestani up until 1973 in his khidmah, in his service. And Sheikh Abdullah's service was heavy duty service. He put him in so many khalwas, sometimes for a year, seclusions, sometimes for six months. He would send him often to go to walk from Sham all the way through Iraq, all the way to Turkey sometimes. Stopping in each town, sleeping in the masajid, sitting with the people, serving the people, teaching the people, like that. It would take him a long time. And then he would also, during the Hajj season, would go to send him to Cyprus. At that time, the secularist were giving a hard time. They changed the adhan from Arabi to Turkish. You, you couldn't say the adhan in Arabi. Mawlana Sheikh Nazim had a hundred cases against him in Cyprus because he would make the adhan in Arabic. And the day that the court was supposed to rule against him, the, I think the, the president changed and he allowed Arabic again. But he would take all these old peoples because in this secu secular culture, nobody goes to Hajj or Umrah except when they're in old age. So only the very old people would go to Hajj and there's nobody. Mawlana Sheikh Nazim would go and collect them and take them to Hajj and serve them. Over 30 Hajj. This is their, their, their their life, people think uh, they reach by what? They reach the, the, the greater the shaykh, the greater the wali, the more difficulty they have to endure in their lives. And he was such a darwish, Mawlana Sheikh Nazim, such a humble person. I remember one time they convinced him to go visit somebody in Cyprus and they went and bought him an, a bed because his bed, since he got into that house, the bed was in the house, maybe in the, I don't know, 60, uh, 80, 70, something like that. The bed was in the house and they wanted to change the bed for him. And so he refused, absolutely not. I'm happy with my bed, leave me alone. There is no problem. Then I remember they called us from the Darga, Mawlana Sheikh Nazim, we need to take something upstairs to help with the bed. They had to enter it through the window. The house, the house he lived in is small. If you ever go visit, 
It's a house built maybe 70, 80 years ago. It's very small. So he, and he came and he was very upset. Like, why did you, my, 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 the bed was fine. Why you have to go buy a new bed? And this is a, a human being where he had people coming to visit him by the thousands, bringing him gifts. People would come sometimes with a bag and give him a bag full of Allah knows how much from UK and from here and there. A few hours later, somebody else comes and says, oh, Sheikh, I'm doing da'wah in uh, here or there. Doesn't even count it, doesn't look at it, takes it and gives it to himself. And we heard many stories of people seeing him sometimes after everyone goes to sleep. He goes to the kitchen, he used to look at the uh, garbage. He sees sometimes half an eaten apple or uh, he would take them, clean them. And they say he would eat them himself. A real Darwish, real man of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise him and sanctify him. He, he, had, he, he was one of those rare stones in which people can get transformed in his presence. Each according to their intention. Don't look at the murids of the shaykh and say, well, naqsbandi tariqa, there is all kinds of people, yes. When you go to, when you used to visit the Darga in uh, Cyprus, you are like entering a washing machine. <laughs> At the end of it, you're going to be dizzy. You see all kinds of people with all kinds of aspirations, with all kinds of intentions. And Mawlana Sheikh gave everybody bayan, never turned anyone away. He never said to somebody, you are not worthy. You are not acceptable. Every single person who came, he accepted him. And because of that, uh, you, amongst the Turuq, you find the Naqshbandi, uh, there's all kinds of people in there. Some a little bit, uh, off, some a little bit on, some, some coming for dunya, some coming for uh, to be sheikhs, some coming for Allah, some Allah, some they don't know why they're there. But it was a beautiful thing if a person, uh, this the, the times where you learn about yourself is not when everything is fine. You learn about yourself. Uh, through your tahammul uh, al you you enter uh, when somebody people you think people think oh I am so holy now I'm praying I'm making tahajjud I'm making I'm fasting I am I am and then you go to visit Maulana and some guy you're sleeping in the darga comes with a drum and beats it on top of your head to wake you up. And then you, you realize your bad side comes out and you realize you're not so patient. Things like that. People would, would sometimes fight in the darga. Uh, you meet people who are not, not just, uh, the manners are not refined. Sometimes no manners whatsoever. But this is the prophetic way. Look at what Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu endured. Look at how he dealt with all the people of the desert from with all their uh, bad manners at that time, with all their difficulty, Arab, Bedouins, uh, how much abuse he got from everybody. And so you understand one time Mawlana Sheikh went to Switzerland, they took him to a, a Buddhist temple up on top of the mountain, very serene sites, beautiful place. And we said this in Detroit. And uh, everybody is, and so be behaved. Well, I said, said to myself, 
He said it's nice. He says if you put people in in such uh, atmosphere, everything is nice. Everybody is nice. Organic food, organic air, beautiful scenery. It's not so hard to for the ego to be happy with this state, but then go and live amongst the people. And can you maintain this state? Can you maintain this serenity? Can you ma maintain this uh, good behavior? No. That's why Islam and the Prophet of Islam is not one religion that tells its adherents to shun being in the world. It wants you to be in the world, but not to be of the world. It wants, it wants, the, it wants you to use this dunya, but don't let it into your heart. That is what can be achieved in Islam, and the way to achieve it is through Suhbatul Ahlillah, through Mashaykh, through Tazkiyatul Nafs. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise the station of Mawlana Shaykh Nazim endlessly. Allahumma zi anna khayra. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us to leave this dunya on Iman and Islam, insha'Allah, to be with them, also with Ahlillah, not just in this world, but in the hereafter.